Welcome to Latin Mass Response Tutorial, Part 2. This is Father Robert Fermigeau, your guide. In Part 1, we looked at the first five lines of the prayers at the foot of the altar, beginning with the making of the sign of the cross. Let us press on now to the remaining lines that lead up to the confidior. So the first line, which the priest will say, is Emite lucem tuam et veritatem tuam, ipsame deduxerunt et adduxerunt in montem sanctum tuum et in tabernacula tua. This means, send forth your light and your truth. They have conducted me and brought me unto your holy hill and into your tabernacles. So, how do you say, send forth? or emit, emite. And how do you say, emit light, emite lucem. And how do you say, emit your light, emite lucem tuam. And how do you say, emit your light and your truth? Emite lucem tuam et veritatem tuam. So what are the two words for light and truth as found in this line? Lucem veritatem. Good. Now the next word has a name. It's called usually a pronoun. In order to understand what a pronoun is, perhaps it's better to call it a proxy noun. It is a noun that stands in for a previously mentioned noun or nouns. So we just heard the noun lucem, and the noun veritatem. These will be now referred to using the word ipsa. In English, this can mean they or these. So how do you say they, referring to lucem and veritatem? Ipsa. So how would you say, they have conducted, or they have brought? Ipsa deduxerunt. Let's take a closer look at this verb, deduxerunt. This means, they conducted. In the English, we have a pronoun, they, followed by the verb conducted. So the pronoun they tells you that you're dealing with two things, in this case, light and truth, and the ed attached to the verb conducted tells you that the conducting is taking place in the past they conducted some time in the past. Now let's look at the Latin verb, deduxerunt. Unlike the ed ending of conducted, erunt not only tells you that you're dealing with a past tense verb, the perfect tense, but also that it is a third person plural. In other words, it does the job that the pronoun did in the English. It so happens that we already have a pronoun in the Latin, ipsa, but we don't need this pronoun. We could simply infer from the ending of the verb deduxerunt that we were dealing with the two previous nouns, lucem and veritatem. So, again, how do you say, 
they conducted in Latin. Ipsa deduxerunt. How do you say now, they conducted me, or they have conducted me, either one? Ipsa me deduxerunt. Of course, it is theoretically possible to say ipsa deduxerunt me, but we must go with the official text. Ipsa me deduxerunt. The Latin goes on to say a, a bit more about this lucem and veritatem. So we have another similar use of the verb ducere. Instead of saying deduxerunt, we're going to say aduxerunt. In the English, we distinguish between these two verbs that are very close to each other in meaning by using two similar verbs in English. They have conducted me for deduxerunt, and they have brought me aduxerunt. It's a way of emphasizing this action that light and truth have upon me. And so how do you say, they have conducted me and brought me? Ipsa me deduxerunt et aduxerunt. It's true, you could also have said, Ipsa me deduxerunt et me aduxerunt. However, the personal pronoun me does double duty, so you don't have to repeat it. And indeed, it is not repeated in the actual text. So how do you say, send forth your light and your truth? Emite lucem tuam, et veritatem tuam. And how do you say, they have conducted me and brought me? Ipsa me deduxerunt et aduxerunt. And now we go to where these have brought me. So how do you say, unto the mountain? In montem, in montem. How would you say, unto your mountain? In montem tuum. And how would you say, unto your holy mountain? In montem sanctum tuum. And where else are we going to be brought by the light and truth of God? We are going to be brought into his tabernacles, his dwelling places. We'll use the word tabernacles since that is a nice friendly cognate. So how do you say tabernacles? Tabernacula. And how do you say unto or into your tabernacles? In tabernacula tua. And how do you say unto your holy mountain? In montem sanctum tuum. And how do you say into your tabernacles? In tabernacula tua. How do you say, unto your holy mountain and unto your tabernacles? In montem sanctum tuum et in tabernacula tua. How do you say, send forth or emit your light and your truth? 
emitte lucem tuam et veritatem tuam. And what is the proxy noun that will substi be substituted for lucem and veritatem? Ipsa. How do you say these or they have conducted and brought me unto the mountain? Ipsa me deduxerunt et aduxerunt in montem. And how do you say they have conducted me and brought me into your holy mountain? Ipsa me deduxerunt et aduxerunt in montem sanctum tuum. And how do you say they have conducted me and brought me into your holy mountain and into your tabernacles? Ipsa me deduxerunt et aduxerunt in montem sanctum tuum et in tabernacula tua. So how do you say, send forth your light and your truth? They have conducted me and brought me unto your holy hill and into your tabernacles. Emite lucem tuam et veritatem tuam Ipsa me deduxerunt et aduxerunt in montem sanctum tuum et in tabernacula tua. Now the response that the server makes to this line of the celebrant is the same that the celebrant said just a few lines before, in addition to the response that the server makes to that. Namely, and I will go in unto the altar of God to God who gives joy to my youth. So this will be a review. How do you say, and I will go in unto the altar of God? Et introibo ad altare dei. And what part of the verb introibo tells you that you are dealing with a future action? Bo. Now, if you had to translate simply bo, how would you do it? I will. And so, once again, how do you say, I will go in? Introibo. And if you look at the English, we say, of God, unto the altar of God. Where do we find this preposition of in the Latin? That's right. We find it at the end of the word dei. The I, pronounced E in Latin, is the equivalent of the preposition in English, of. And so, to say, unto the altar of God, we simply say, ad altare dei, dei. Where else are we going? We are going to the God who latificates, or who gives joy to, my youth. So how do you say, to God, who gives joy to my youth. Ad Deum qui letificat juventutem meam. The priest next says, Confitebor tibi incitra, Deus, Deus meus, quare tristis es anima mea, et quare conturbas me. This means, I will give praise to you upon the harp, O God, my God. Why are you sad, O my soul? And why do you trouble me? How do you say, I will give praise? Or simply, I will praise. 
Confitebor. Confitebor. And what part of this verb tells you that it is I will? Bor. So how do you say I will praise? Confitebor. And how do you say I will praise you or I will give praise to you. Confitebor tibi. Confitebor tibi. How do you say upon the harp? Upon the harp. In chitara. In chitara. Again, notice there is no definite article in Latin. So when you hear the definite article in English, you simply omit any such thing in the Latin. Upon the harp in chitara. How do you say, O oh God, when you are addressing God? Deus. How do you say, my God? Deus meus. In English, the pronoun my precedes the noun, my God. In Latin, the pronoun may precede, but it can also come after the noun that it is modifying. In this case, it comes after Deus meus. How do you say, I will give praise to you on the harp? Confitebor tibi in chitara. How do you say, O God, my God? Deus, Deus meus. How do you say, I will give praise to you upon the harp, O God, my God? Confitebor tibi in chitara, Deus, Deus meus. How do you say, I will give praise? Confitebor. And how do you say, I will give praise to you? Confitebor tibi. How do you say, I will give praise to you on the harp? Confitebor tibi in chitara. How do you say, O God, my God? Deus, Deus meus. And so how do you say, I will give praise to you upon the harp, O God, my God? Confitebor tibi in chitara, Deus, Deus meus. How do you say, why? Quare. Again, how do you say, why? Quare. And how do you say, you are, or in this case, are you, since we're asking a question? S. How do you say, why are you? Quare es. How do you say, why are you sad? Quare es tristis. However, in the Latin, the adjective sad or tristis can precede and does precede the verb are. So, say it that way. How do you say, why sad are you? Quare tristis es. Of course, we would never say that in English, but I do it here for your sake. Why sad are you? Quare tristis es. 
Now here we are addressing one's own soul. How do you say soul? Anima. How do you say my soul? Anima mea. How do you say then, why are you sad, O oh my soul? Quare tristis es anima mea. And how do you say, why do you trouble me? Quare conturbas me. If we look at the verb conturbas, what part of it tells us or is equivalent to the English you? As, the last two syllables. Conturbas, that tells us you. Why do you trouble? The verb to trouble, the infinitive form, is conturbare. We might get the verb or the noun perturbation, perturbatio, from this word, turbare. Here we have the prefix added to intensify it, conturbare, when we want to say you trouble, you perturb, we simply say conturbas. So, how then, again, do you say, and why do you trouble me? Et quare conturbas me. How do you say, I will give praise to you upon the harp? Confitebor tibi incitera. How do you say, why are you sad? Quare tristis es. How do you say, why are you sad, O oh my soul? Quare tristis es anima mea. How do you say, why do you trouble me? Quare conturbas me. How do you say, why are you sad, O oh my soul, and why do you trouble me? Quare tristis es anima mea, et quare conturbas me. The server then follows this with Spera in Deo, quoniam adhu confitebor illi, salutare vultus mei, et Deus meus. This means, hope in God, for I will still give praise to him, the salvation of my countenance and my God. How do you say hope, giving a kind of command? Spera. How do you say hope in God? Spera in Deo. How do you say because or for? Quoniam. How do you say hope in God because? Spera in Deo quoniam. How do you say hope in God because I will praise him. Spera in Deo, quoniam confitebor illi. How do you say, still, or yet? Adhuc. How do you say, because I will still praise, or still give praise to him. Quoniam adhuc confitebor illi. 
How do you say, hope in God? Spera in Deo. How do you say, hope in God, because I will still give praise to him? Spera in Deo, quoniam adhu confitebori How do you say, the salvation? Salutare. How do you say, the salvation of my countenance? Salutare vultus mei. Once again, how do you say, the salvation? Salutare. Notice, there was no need to translate the definite article, the. Salvation, the salvation, salutare. Now, this is the salvation of my countenance. So, how do you say, once again, of my countenance? Vultus mei. And then how do you say, and my God, et Deus meus. Again, notice the meus follows Deus, the possessive pronoun, my, or meus, follows the noun to which it is attached et Deus meus. It's as though we said in English, and God my. But we don't. But in Latin, we do. So, and my God is et Deus meus. After this, the priest says the familiar doxology the familiar glory be. He says, Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. We translate this as, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. How do you say glory? Gloria. How do you say glory to the Father? Gloria Patri. How do you say and? Et. How do you say and to the Son? Et filio. If you compare the word Son in the sign of the cross, you will notice a difference in the ending. The noun is inflected or bent a different way. In the sign of the cross, we said, in nomine patris et filii. The two eyes at the end, or the one eye really, the last eye, indicates to you that it is of the son, the genitive case. Here, instead of an I, you have an O, filio. That tells you it is the dative case. Something is being given to, as it were, the son in this case. Filio, filio. Of the son, filii. To the son, or sometimes for the son, filio. The same is true with pater. Pater simply means father or the father. Of the father, patris. To the father, patri. So, again, how do you say glory be to the father and to the son? Gloria patri et filio. Notice, in English, we can say glory be. We can add 
the verb to be. In Latin, however, it is not brought in. We don't say gloria sit patri. We could, but it isn't necessary. And so now we have one last person to do, the Holy Spirit. How do you say spirit in Latin? Spiritus. How do you say to the spirit? Spiritui. Spiritui. Notice the accent is on the I following the R. Ri. Spiritui. And the final vowel or letter of this form of spiritus is an I. Spiritui. How do you say to the Holy Spirit? Spiritui Sancto. Spiritui Sancto. How do you say, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit? Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. The server will respond to this. Sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper et in secula seculorum. Amen. Literally, this is translated, as it was in the beginning, is also now and always unto ages of ages. Amen. Traditionally, this is translated slightly differently as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. We'll stick to the literal translation for now to make it easier to understand exactly what you are saying in the Latin. So, how do you say, it was? Erat. Again, how do you say, it was? Erat. How do you say, as it was? Sicut erat. How do you say, in the beginning? In principio. How do you say, it was in the beginning? Erat in principio. How do you say, as it was in the beginning? Sicut erat in principio. How do you say, and now? Et nunc. Again, how do you say, and now, et nunc. How do you say, always, semper? How do you say, and now and always, et nunc et semper? How do you say, Unto ages of ages. In secula seculorum. How do you say, unto ages? In secula. How do you say, of ages? Seculorum. How do you say, Unto ages of ages, in secula seculorum. How do you say, and unto ages of ages, et in secula seculorum? How do you say, as it was in the beginning, secut erat in principio? How do you say, 
and now, et nunc. How do you say, and always, et semper? How do you say, and now and always, et nunc et semper? How do you say, as it was in the beginning, and now and always? Sicut erat in principio, et nunc et semper. How do you say, as it was in the beginning, and now, and always, and unto ages of ages? Sicut erat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. How do you say, I will go in unto the altar of God? Introibo ad altare Dei. And how do you say, To God, who gives joy to my youth? Ad Deum qui letificat juventutem meam. Moving on to the next line. How do you say, Help, in Latin? Adjutorium. Again, how do you say help in Latin? Adutorium. How do you say our help? Adutorium nostrum. Again, how do you say our help? Adutorium nostrum. How do you say of the Lord? Domini. And what part of Domini corresponds to the English preposition of? E, the last letter. So again, how do you say of the Lord? Domini. How do you say, in the name of the Lord? In nomine domini. How do you say, in the name of the Lord? In nomine domini. How do you say, our help is in the name of the Lord? Adutorium nostrum in nomine domini. Notice in Latin, we don't need to use the verb that means in English, is. We simply say, literally, our help in the name of the Lord. And the verb to be, esse, is implied. So how do you say, our help in the name of the Lord. Adutorium nostrum in nomine domini. How do you say heaven? Celum. Again, how do you say heaven? Celum. How do you say earth? Terram. How do you say heaven and earth? Celum et terram. How do you say who made? Qui fecit. How do you say who? Qui. How do you say made? Fecit. How do you say who made? Qui fecit. How do you say who made heaven and earth? 
qui feci celum et terram. How do you say, Our help is in the name of the Lord? Adutorium nostrum in nomine domini. How do you say, Who made heaven and earth? Qui feci celum et terram. How do you say, Send forth your light and your truth? Emite lucem tuam et veritatem tuam. How do you say, They have brought me, or conducted me, and brought me, unto your holy mountain, and unto your tabernacles? Ipsame deduxerunt et aduxerunt in montem sanctum tuum et in tabernacula tua. How do you say, Hope in God, because I still will give praise to him? Spera in Deo quoniam adhu confitebur ili. How do you say, The salvation of my countenance and my God? Salutare vultus mei et Deus meus. How do you say, Hope in God, for I will still give praise to him, the salvation of my countenance and my God? Spera in Deo quonia matu confitebur ili, salutare vultus mei et Deus meus. How do you say, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost? Gloria Patria et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. How do you say, As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Very good. Now we are ready to tackle the Confitior. <laughs> 